What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles the YouTube channel. Today is the Memphis League Cup round number two. And on the left, we have Brandon. And on the right, we have Kenton Anderson. Look, Kenton. Kenton, I didn't even notice this, but Kenton covered up the Team Fish Knuckles net with his Vancouver World Championship mat. What? What a jerk, Kenton. You are. You are not a. You're not a good fan here. Covering up the Team Fish Knuckles net mat with your Vancouver mat. But here we go, guys. Uh, both players are playing a dark variant. All right, so you see Brandon starts the Evatol, and Kenton's going to start with the Dark Pulse, Dark Right. All right, so let's see how this match play out. Looks like Brandon is playing an Evatol Zorark type deck, and I know Kenton for sure is playing this just straight Speed Dark Right variant with like Fright and with like regular Evatols and just like Max Luxor and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see who what which Dark deck is better. The Evatol Zork build or the Speed Dark Right. So we see Brandon is going to Ultra Ball, discard a Hex Maniac, and a Dark Energy for that Zora. Alrighty, so uh, let's see what else Brandon has here. I'm going to give it a good little shuffle. And let's see what else is in Brandon's hand. I see a Dark Energy, a DCE. He's got a DCE. He could put that on the active, but then he's got to watch out because I know most Dark decks play Enhanced Hammer. Which is never something you want to do. Alright, so we see Sycamore discarding two darks. And now there's three dark energies in Brandon's discard pile. So you see Sycamore discard his hand, draw seven cards. We see Brandon does find a Fright Knight Evatol. He could put that down if he wants to. Uh, let's see, does he opt to put down the Fright Knight? Will he keep it in his hand? Brandon does have a Parallel City as well. You could put Kent down to three if he wants to put that down before Kent puts his down. Which I don't think is... It's not too bad of an idea, and we see that Brandon is going to use a Super Rod, shuffle those Darks back into his deck, so Super Rod coming in really clutch right there to get back those Dark Energies, but he won't be able to Super Rod those Zoras and Zorks back into his deck because he probably only plays the one Super Rod most likely. So let's see, will Brandon put down the Fright Knight or not? That's a big question. He does have a Zorak, and no, just going to pass on to Kent's turn. And let's see what does Kent have here. He's got an Enhanced Turn immediately, just discarding that DC off the active. You see, Kent does have an Ultra Ball, discarding a Ranger and a Silent Lab. And this will most likely, most likely get out of Evatol. Now, you see, Kent does have an Escape Rope, so he can Escape Rope to that Evatol and start using a Blivwing. So what Ken wants to do is put Dark Energies in his discard pile. If he could do this, he could Blue Wing and potentially get multiple energies on his field. And his Pokemon aren't in danger of being knocked out. Because, you know, Ken enhanced hammer. So Brandon can't attack with that the Evasol. Now, Brandon still can hypothetically attack if you like have you elixirs plus DCE. Um, that could be a way to do it for sure. But let's see what is Kenton do here. He's probably going to play the escape rope. Uh, both players are going to switch to active with their bench. We see Kenton going to play Sycamore, discarding the dark and drawing seven new cards. If Kenton can find a dark energy, he can start attacking. And we do see a dark energy. We see a Max Luxor as well and another dark right coming down. All right. So Kenton's going to use Max Luxor. Look at the top cards of his deck. Going to find a dark energy to that dark right. And we're going to see Kenton get down three energies on turn number one, which is why this Turbo Dark deck is so strong. He's going to Blue Wing for 30. Um, and they put a Dark Energy to his bench, Dark Right. And there we go. So is he, uh, does Kenton have another Max Luxor? I see a Flowstone. Kenton's hands are really shaky right now. Um, he's nervous. He's got a Flowstone. I don't know if he wants to put it down. And Yeah, he's not going to put down the Flowstone, which is fine. And we'll see 30 damage dealt to that Zora. All right, so on a Brandis turn, he has an Olympia, which doesn't seem very good right now. We see a Zora coming down. Okay. We see a a Blivwing, another a, a regular Evil Talk coming down. Okay. We see a Fright Knight maybe hitting the field, which I think is fine. And let's see what he decides to do. He has an end. He gets Sycamore. He gets Lysander. Uh, he's going to look through his discard pile. There's a Sycamore, so he has access to all of his supporter cards. And just going to Sycamore, discards a Lysander, Olympia, and an N to get seven new cards, which I think is fine, putting those poke, those supporter cards in your discard pile. I don't know why my camera keeps trying to autofocus like that. Calm down there, buddy. All right, so we see Brandon has a DCE, a Dark Energy. I hope it stops doing that. All right, so uh, Fighting Field going to the Evatol. And uh, will he put it down a Dark or a DCE attachment? He put down a DC attachment last turn and it did not pay off because Kenton just like automatically just like enhanced him or that. And let's see, did Brandon learn his lesson? It looks like he is trying to attach a dark energy. Gonna put on the Evatol Yex, okay. And we'll most likely see a pass from Brandon because he cannot retreat this guy. Oh no, we'll see Shaman setting up for two. 
Dating final Max looks are in a floatstone. I do not see that. Okay. So let's see pass on to Kent's turn. Now Kent, he has a floatstone to be active. Okay. He's got a Sycamore discarding a Shaman, Dark, and a VS Seeker, which is great because now he can Blivewing again, and he's going to have a ton of energies on his field out by turn number two. We see a Dark and a Dark Rye. I uh, see an EXP share in his hand. He could put that on one of his Dark Rides as well. We'll see a Trainer's Mill. Look at top cards of his deck. Does he find another Max Luxor? And I think I see one in his hand. If he goes for a Max Luxor, he can get one, two, three, four, five, like six energies on turn number two or something like that, which is crazy. All right. So let's see. Kent's going to decide what to do. Does he Max Luxor? He has a sound lab in his hand. All right. So let's see. What does he do with this? It looks like he is going to grab an Ultra Ball. Okay. And with the Ultra Ball, he's going to discard a, a sound lab and a delinquent to get probably another Dark REX on the field. So we all of his Dark Rides will have energies on it. And if he doesn't have a Max Luxor, that's okay. Uh, he really needs a Dark Energy attachment for his turn. And that way he can like abuse the Ability Wing Eve. It's all getting two energies per your turn, which is really, really good. All right, so we see Ken's going to most likely put down the Dark Rye. And does he put an EXP share? Yeah, put an EXP share on one of those guys. And we will see a Blue Wing doing 30, putting another Dark Energy on probably the new Dark Rye without the EXP share. So right now, Ken has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 energies on the field, which means he can do 120 with a Dark Pulse because it does 20 plus 20 for each energy on your field. And on a Brandon's turn, Brandon really doesn't have much. He can use like a... Eve Ball for like 20, 40, 60, 80, um, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 90 damage, which doesn't knock out the Eve at all. It really doesn't knock out a Dark Rye either. So Brandon's in a weird position. Uh, he could put down the DCE, but then he has to find a Flowstone for a Zark. Okay. So let's see. Does he put the DC on the active? You use Mind Jack maybe. It won't take a knockout either. It'll only do 100 damage. That's not very good. We'll see a DC go down to Eve at all. Yes. Okay. Um, he does have a VS Seeker he could Olympia right now. We see an Evasol coming down, and let's see, what is Brandon going to do? Play it in, and both players are going to get new hands of six. And what Brandon really, really needs right now, he needs a Flowstone. If he can Flowstone the active Zorak, he can retreat to the bench, and then start swinging with the Evasol EX. Maybe use the White Cyclone to conserve your DCE. Uh, maybe just Eva Ball so that we can do a ton of damage to Dark Rider later on. And I think... If you get the Flowstone, you definitely use Wise Cyclone. I think that might be the correct play. I don't know. I always hate these like dark decks. They have so many options, so many different things to do. And but does Brandon find the Flowstone? And I do not see one right now. Oh my goodness, that is not good for Brandon at all. He's already attached return. He's got another Dark Energy, Sycamore, Sycamore, Via Seeker. Yeah, he's got two Via Seekers, two Sycamores, a Dark Energy, and maybe Enhanced Hammer or something. I know an Ultra Ball. All right, so pass on a Kent's turn. Going to fight if you're on a Dark Rite. Going to put down another Dark Rite. Max looks there. Look at top scarts of his deck. Going to find a Dark Rite to that a Dark Energy that Dark Rite. And it's it's starting not looking good for Brandon. There's a lot of... Okay, there's an E-Hammer. Discarding the DC off that Eva Doll. And we'll see in. Both players are going to shuffle up get six new cards. So before Brandon can even get attack off, Kent has discarded two DCs, which is crazy. But right now, Ken has two, four, five, six energies on the field, uh, which means he does 140. If he finds another energy, he can attach it to one of Dark Rise to do 160. And then with Max Luxor and everything like that, Kitten could potentially start one shotting this Eva Tall Yaks uh, within a turn. So let's see. Will Kitten, uh, will he start attacking with the Dark Rise? I, I would say probably it's not too big of a deal. Going to put it on the deck guy. He can retreat. There's another Max Luxor. Oh my goodness. Will Kenton hit this one as well? Let's find out, guys. Will Kenton find an energy with this Max Luxor? Going to look at top cards of his deck, and he unfortunately does not find one. But I think Kenton's doing a great spot. Um, with these Dark Rise, he's only going to have two energies on him. So that's, I mean, you know, even Tall is not going to do too much damage to it. We see a Fighting Field going to the other Dark Rise as well. Okay. And uh, Ken is just going to Bolivia Wing, actually, do 30 more damage to that guy. All right, so Ken's going to wait. He's going to let Brandon attack first. There's no way, you know, Ken's not going to put his Dark Rides in danger. He's just going to be fine. You know, Bolivia Wing, next turn, Ken can up Bolivia Wing for the knockout. And, uh, yeah, it's, whew. I mean, neither player has really done anything. But looking at the board state, you see Ken's board state is crazy. He has a ton of energies on the field. Um, 
The only downside about Ken is we know that Brandon does play that Parallel City. So Brandon could potentially get an energy off one of those Dark Ice if he gets a Parallel City. And we see Brandon does not have enough Flowstone. He has another DCE, uh, which, I mean, he could put an energy on the active. 3, 6, 9, 12. It only does 130. It will knock out the active. But then, you know, the EXP shirt keeps the energy on the field, and then you put Ken's bench down to three, and the Parallel City is not effective anymore. So we see a DC going to the active. Uh, Brandon does have a Lysander, so he can Lysander a bench Pokemon and do a ton of damage to it. So that's what he's going to do here. He's going to bring up the, the Dark REX, use Mind Jack for 130 damage, and uh, how will Ken respond to this? Does he have a switch? I see an EXP share have a, have a, a Lysander Zan. Um... He could lice into the Evitol and do a ton of damage to it, but then Brandon can just like rush in or stand in and take a knockout. So Kitten has to deal with his Evitol. I mean the Zorg. So what Kitten could do if he has a switch in his hand, which I think I do see a switch, he gets switched to the Blivwing Evitol and put a EXP share on the other Dark Rite. So that way if, if Brandon does have another life stander, he can at least keep the energies on his field. So an EXP share to that guy. I would probably see a switch in a bullet wing is what I would do if I was Kenton because you don't want to put your Dark Rai in, in the way, but you want to knock out the Zorak because it, it is the big threat right now. So let's see, what does Kenton do? I think you just, if, if that is a switch, I don't know if it is a switch. If it is, then I'm just, you know, just I'm just hoping it's a switch. I know Kenton does play him in his deck. So Kenton's going to look at Brandon's Discard Pile, and let's see what Kenton decides to do. Does he Dark Pulse, this die, die guy for knockout? Does he switch? Either way, if Brandon takes a knockout, both those energies go, do go back on Kenton's hand. And I do see a double switch in Kenton's hand. See, if I'm Kenton here, I think I just switch. Um, a blue wing for the knockout. And then next turn, you potentially knock out the Evil Talia because you have a crazy hand. So yeah, we'll see a blue wing for the knockout going down to five prize cards. All right, so on to Brandon's turn. Let's see, what does he decide to do here? Um, he's got another Zora in hand, he got a Zork as well, and an Evitol with one energy with no VS Seeker. So Brandon could maybe bring up the Evitol EX and use Eva Ball, but that doesn't do too much. It looks like he is just bring up the, the baby Evitol, which I think is a little bit better. And there's an E-Hammer, which is totally useless against Kenton, because Kenton does not play any of those uh, special energies. So we see a Zora coming down, uh, we see Brandon does have a Dark Energy, he can Oblivion this turn. Or he could try to power up a super Evitol EX, or he can go for a Fright Knight if he wants to do it that way as well. Um, Fright Knight could be really good because you can pitch Black Spear um, 6, 12, 13, take a knock on the Dark EX on the bench because of the uh, Fright Knight ability to shut down tools, which could be really nice. Um, but looks like we might put, I think you put a Dark Energy on the active no matter what because you can believe you put another energy on your field. It looks like he's not going to do that. Okay. And you're going to see a pass. Yeah, I think for sure you just have Blivin here. Do 30 and get another energy on your field. There's, it doesn't really hurt anything. But on Kent's turn, he's going to play a Trainer's Mill. He has a VS Seeker in his hand. And if I'm Kenton, I might just like license the Zora, take a knockout of the Dark Eye, maybe knock out a Shaman. Uh, two, four, five, six, seven. He's only doing 160 right now, which doesn't knock out an Evitol EX. Or he could just sick him wherever he wants to. But it looks like he's going to like Sander, bring up that Evitol with uh, all the damage, or all the energies on it. Going to retreat and use Dark Pulse for 160. Um, putting some heavy pressure on Brandon for sure. So 6, 12, there's a, oh, 170 HP. Sorry, because the uh, the Dark Rite. Uh, Kenton could have licensed the fright the Evitol with all the uh, with no energies on it, but Kenton's instead going to hurt the guy that has all the energies on it plus the fighting fear belt just to start the war. So we see a Zork coming down. Uh, Brandon does have a Sycamore to discard his hand, draw seventy cards. But I wonder what he'll decide to dig for. All right. So uh, does Brandon just play Sycamore? Does he hold on to his hand? Does he attach a Dark Energy? The Dark Energy doesn't really do anything too crazy. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. Does 130. Um, I think you just Evitol here with the... Uh, and put a, a start pound with the other Evitol. I think that's the plan. So, or you can Y Cyclone. We see a Dark Energy. I think you definitely put this on either the Fright Knight Evitol. Or the Evitol EX. 
I think that's for sure they play. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Yeah, so you definitely put the energy on the Fright Knight. Because then what you can do next turn is hit a DCE and take double knockouts on the Dark Rise. But we're going to see Brain attach it to the Oblivion and Evital, which I'm not sure if I like that play. Um, he looks like he might retreat. We'll see Sycamore from his hand, discard, draw 70 cards. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 110. Um... Well, I guess a Fright Knight would have knocked it out because he has 180 HP, not 170. So that's my fault. All right, so Brandon's going to find a Parallel City, which he could put down to discard the uh, these, you know, discard one of Kitten's energies, which most likely be the, I don't know, probably the, the Believing Evital because it's really not useful anymore. But either way, Brandon's not taking a knockout of Kitten. It's going to knock out the Evital Yax and put him in a bad situation. So let's see, what does Brandon decide to do here? Does he... Um, he, he's going to evolve for sure, but he could retreat. I mean, he could retreat in a Wing. Maybe that's why he put energy on that Evital. He's got a Parallel City. He can maybe Kenton discards a Pokemon if he wants to go that route because Kenton does have a four bench. And he can put Kenton on a three. And it looks like he's going to eyeball that Parallel City. Uh, Brandon's taking a second. Maybe he'll just evolve for a ton of damage. Um, so yeah, Parallel City, gonna put Kenton down to 3, and Kenton's probably just gonna discard the Evital with the Floatstone. Uh, he's really not needed anymore, which I think is okay, I think that's a great play anyway. Alright, so let's see, does Brandon retreat? And he is gonna retreat this Evital to promote the, the Oblivion one, but it's just gonna get knocked out, so it's really not gonna do too much, and the Kenton will have 4 prize cards, and all he have to do is knock out a Shaman, and the Evital with all the damage on it. Hmm. So Brandon is in a, a, a sticky situation. Like I said, I'd rather see that the energy attachment for the turn either on the Evital or the Fright Knight Evital instead of the one, um, the Blitwing one. Unless he's going to Blitwing this turn. Let's see, what does Brandon do here? We're going to see an E-Ball for 110 damage. Alright, so on a Kitten's turn, uh, does he, I don't think he has any more switches in his deck. I think he discarded them already. So Dark can go to Dark Rye. Uh, so right now Kitten has two, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so he's doing one sixty. So Kitten can license out the Fright Knight Evital if he wants to do that. It'll knock out the Fighting Fear Belt one, and this is a really amazing play by Kitten. So he's gonna license bring up Brandon's own Fright Knight, go to knock out his own Evital Yax, take two prize cards. Okay, there's two prize cards, and then Ken can knock out the active Fright Knight. And put Brand oh my goodness, that is an amazing play by Kent right there. Uh, yeah, so yeah, there we go. And then going to uh, Dark Pulse for the knockout, going down to two prize cards. And all Kent has to do now is knock out that uh, Shaman next turn. All right, so we see an Evatop coming up. But what Brandon can do is he can uh, he can maybe take a knockout with the uh, Mind Jack if he wants to do it that way. That's probably his only way to take a knockout if he wants to go that route. But even then, it's not too strong because both the EXP shares from the Dark Rise get activated. They go to both those guys. And the Ken, all he needs is a Lysander and he'll win the game. Uh, so Brandon is in a bad situation. It's currently 6 to 2 on price cards. And you got to think Kitten does have this. I'm not sure what Brandon can do to get out of this sticky situation. Okay, so we see an, a, an energy going down to the, the Evital. Okay. We see maybe an Ultra Ball, but as long as Kitten has a VS Seeker, he can bring up the Shaman and win the game. There's no way this Evital is taking a knockout. We'll see a Fright Knight, or a uh, Nibbling doing 30, bringing that up to 140. On a Kitten's turn, he has another Life, uh, is a Life Standard and a VS Seeker. And either way, he has the Shaman for the knockout, and Kitten will take this game. Uh, the thing that swung this matchup so much was the Enhanced Hammers. Ken just played those enhanced damage really early, got all of those DCs off the field, and made it where Brandon could not take a knockout or even attack for, uh, free, uh, for anything. But guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. You can see why Speed Dark Rise is so strong and how it can do so much damage. But guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Alrighty. Bye. Alright guys, I just want to give a quick shout out to our three sponsors, 60 Cards, Yeti Gaming, and the Pokemon Company International. Links to everything will be down below in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Alrighty.